Are you under 18? Yep. Can I see your ID? Yes. They've already closed up the flight. That's why you want to go check in. The reason why we're held back from doing what we want to do is because of what people think about what we do. Hey, you want to grow your YouTube channel? You want to grow your Instagram? We'll want you to document the journey. Six sixteen, six seventeen, actually a.m. We're finally out of the house, but first things first, we uh, gotta grab coffee. It's seven oh three. I'm not gonna arrive to the airport until seven thirty eight. Airplane will board at eight o'clock. Really hate to say this, but it doesn't seem like we're gonna make it. Uh, so, am I gonna be able to board? Yeah, much. and you need to go ahead yes, and you need to be on your way because they're starting boarding right now. Lane home. Rush. Tori Rush. Tori Rush. Tori Rush. Passenger. No. Okay. I know you're late. Passenger Robert. Matthew Robert. Matthew Robert. We're done then. The close to flight. Yeah. So what, so what next? I don't know, let's find out. It's going to be the third time we miss a flight and I'm not happy about it. Not happy at all. What happened? We're um, on standby for the next one. So basically somebody has to be late. Somebody has to go to Starbucks and be late. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Three people. <laughs> Alright, it is 1, no, it's not even 1, it's, it's 12.41 and um, we just finished having lunch, you saw, um, food was really good. Here's the thing though, we came back Here, to, to uh, I can use some help, <laughs> so we just got back to the terminal and the lady said that the flight is full. Our future doesn't look very promising, right? And we'd be lucky if we have one empty seat. So uh, we're feeling pretty positive that there's going to be three empty seats. So um, who knows? We'll see. It's fuck. 7 Eleven. We've been here for like fucking 45 minutes and we're still checking in. Can you fucking believe it? Might as well, right? And of course, this vlog wouldn't be complete if we didn't give you a room tour, which <laughs> this is it. It's pretty cool is the view from here. Everybody's going to work. Should we just jump in the shower now? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Or can we rest for like 20 minutes?
the rest of your career, there are going to continue to be new hows, right? Like there's always going to be a new platform, there's always going to be a new method, there's always going to be a new channel to reach people. Don't worry about how. If you can figure out the why and the who, the how is going to take care of itself every time. You can do a Facebook story poll sticker if you're familiar with that and just put it in the feed. Emotional. I'm missing my little guy. It's the three T's, your tips, tricks, your takeaways. There's no excuse not to make content. You don't have to make your own. You just need to find somebody else's. I mean, you can be inspired by a business book, Gary Vee's book, and say, hey, I'm showing this book today. I'm going to tag Gary Vee. And by the way, here's my three favorite things about it. Did you have to come up with any of that content? Zero. I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. Just talk about it. People will gravitate to you. Your communication style will resonate with someone. And, you know, if something doesn't work, they cut it. If something works, they do more of that. It's kind of the four C's, and that uh, when it comes to uh, specifically content, like how to help your loan officers, it's create content, curate content, coach, and then copy, and then copy, and then copy. With a podcast, you can use that as a piece of pillar content. You do one interview, if you're recording it both audio and video, then you can take that and repurpose it. Very important. One is your vision. What's your end game here? What are you actually trying to accomplish? And two, what is really, you know, how are you going to get it done? What's the mission? Um, is Move Mortgage has a six hour goal. So I'm, I'm for our underwriter one. So when a file comes in, we've got our underwriters six hours to give an initial view on that file. Well, we're, we just had our biggest month ever. And so we're not hitting the six hour goal. We're a little bit behind. But every month we put out on social media what our stat is on the six hour upfront underwrite. And so just like we do every month, we put it out that in May it was 8.7 hours. Now, 8.7 hours is still pretty damn good. Just gonna yeah. throw that out there. But it's not our goal. We're, st we're two, almost three hours behind. But we own that and put that out there because number one, it reminds people that we have a goal and that we're a goal-oriented company working towards it. Be honest. And that we're not perfect. Very, very raw. There's no edits. Right. And that's what that's what people like to see, especially as C-level executives. He currently I mean, has a naked profile picture on Facebook, so if you want to... No, <laughs> those are pictures for later. So many people uh, having people write content to them, or, hey, you need to be scripted, you need to say this, you need to say that. And it comes out so freaking fake. Yeah. Like, it's just like, holy shit, who were, oh, can I swear? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Clayton, can I? Um, and so we went from doing 50 million a month with three and a half loan officers to now we're doing, uh, we're doing much more than that. We're doing about 350 million a month in volume but we have 50 loan officers. Now they're non-commissioned, so because I do think fundamentally someone should get paid more if the number is a three versus a two, 100,000, right? Because I think that, that, that is a, that, that's an anachronism of the older school way of doing things. I also think that the same thing applies in terms of real estate, right? Uh, you know, like a house just because home prices have gone up doesn't mean that the realtor's doing marginally that much more work or whatever else. That, I, I need that to sink in, right? Remember, this is a battle cry. They can go to Lending Tree, and they think we're not necessary because they can go to Zillow. Right. But, you, but you know very well that without us, they pay too much. They don't know what to do when it doesn't appraise. They don't know what to do about gift money. They don't know what to do in the process. They go through that employee program at an unnamed bank, which shall remain nameless, where the employee program is in damn Minneapolis, and I'm here trying to get to a closing, and that employee lender's like, I mean, I'll get around to it one day. And so until we tell people that there's an alternative, it won't get fixed, and we don't tell them there's an alternative unless we do it in a really meaningful way. And that starts with treating one another as the professionals we are. It's not just about prospecting, it's not just about lead cultivation, it's about why we exist and why we matter. And let the shitty ones go away. You're gonna lose lenders in the future. You're gonna lose realtors in the future. Frankly, they can all turn their licenses into me. I'll be like Barney Fife into a citizen's race. Because I'm tired of it. They make yep. mediocrity makes us look bad. So are we gonna make it different? Yes. All right, that's my introduction. Dustin? <laughs>
No, I don't. Mess up your beard. <laughs> Ginger Bell, come up. She is the edgy marketing specialist at edgemarketing.com.